Hi, welcome to Cybertrain.it's 10-minute series. Uh, today we're going to be talking to you about Kerberos. And just a quick reminder, with these 10-minute series, we're not trying to get to all the details and all the underlying um, uh, complexities of each of these technologies and topics that we talk about. What we're working towards is helping those of you that are looking for certifications like Security Plus, CISSP, some of those really important certifications in the field today. We're looking at giving you an overview of some of these more complex ideas and topics and protocols so that you can have enough information to understand uh, at a high enough level, but still get the working so that you can pass these certification exams, right? So it's not everything you ever wanted to know about Kerberos, but it should be enough to help you move forward with your studies. Now, um, when we do talk about Kerberos, it is a network authentication protocol. So when we say network authentication protocol, the idea is single sign-on. You log in once, and then you have access to all the resources throughout the domain, all right? Um, Kerberos has been around for a long time. I'm not saying it's the only game in town or in every situation the best game in town, but it was created years and years and years ago at MIT. It's been used in Unix forever. It's been used in Microsoft products from Windows 2000 forward, so it is very popular, and it's one that you need to understand. Now, I have a nice long list of definitions. I'm not going to read these to you. It would bore you to death. It would bore me to death. Right. So what I want you to do is after we give this explanation on Kerberos, if you'd come back and take a look at the definitions and make sure that you understand them and you know their meaning and what they're going to be used for, I think that's going to be most helpful. But let's go ahead and just jump into the explanation and let's talk about how we can understand Kerberos best. All right, so let's talk about it. Well, I want to talk to you about Kerberos as a carnival. I think that makes it easy to understand. So, um, you know, one of the things I think about, I grew up in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Greensboro, North Carolina is a boring place for a kid to grow up. I don't know if any of you from various areas in North Carolina or wherever you may be from you can relate, but dull, not a lot of action for a kid, except every April, the GYC Carnival would come to town. And what they would do is when they would come to town, the first thing that would happen is they'd set up a big white fence. And that white fence was where the carnival was going to be. Everything inside the carnival, uh, everything inside the fence was part of the carnival or part of the carnival realm. Everything outside, not part of the carnival realm. Boring. Okay. So the fence separated out carnival realm from the rest of the world. All right, now the next thing that would happen is when you go in to the carnival, first thing you have to do is go in through the admission booth. All right, and I'd pay a dollar, get in through the admission booth. Great, I'm in the carnival. I'm in the carnival realm. What can I do? Nothing. I can wander around the carnival realm because it's not me paying the admission that gets me to ride the rides. What I actually need to do is to buy tickets. Now, what I want you to think about, though, is when you go through the admission booth and you pay your dollar, what that actually does is that gives you a wrist strap, right? You remember those little yellow plastic wrist straps you tug on. They're uncomfortable the whole night. But that wrist strap's important because that's your guarantee or that's how you prove you came in through the carnival correctly. More importantly, it lets me talk to the ticket booth. Okay, think about that. If I go up to the ticket booth and I want to buy my tickets to ride the Ferris wheel, the guy at the ticket booth says, wait, you don't have a wrist strap. You must have jumped the fence. Go out, come in the proper way, and I'll sell you tickets. But as long as I came in through the proper channels, I have my wrist strap, I go to the ticket booth, and I get my tickets for the Ferris wheel, bumper cars, swings, whatever. All right, now, before I was old enough to go to the carnival, uh, I went with my, by myself, I went with my family, particularly my mom. I have to go on record now as saying my mother is a lovely woman. She's a lovely woman, but she's a little bit tight with a penny. Mom isn't one to throw money around. So when we went to the carnival, and if I wanted four tickets to ride the, the Ferris wheel, do you think she gave me a $20 bill and said, you go have a great time, Kelly? Oh no, I got four sad little measly tickets. I rode the Ferris wheel, 
Uh, it was fun. Can I ride the Ferris wheel again on those same tickets? Nope. Now I want to ride the bumper cars. What do I have to do? Go get three tickets. Ride the bumper cars. Now I want to ride the swings. Back to the ticket booth. So how many times did I have to come in through admission to get my wrist strap? One. How many times do I have to go to the ticket booth for every ride I want to ride? Okay, that's Kerberos. All right, let's take it a little bit deeper, of course, and let's talk about what we do in terms of logging on to the network. Okay, so when we log on to the network, I provide my username and password. My password is actually set to the side. It's on hold, if you will. It's stored with the security accounts manager. Okay, password does not go across the network. What actually goes across the network is my username. Okay, the authenticating service will generate something called a TGT, a ticket granting ticket. That's the equivalent of my wrist strap. Okay, and here's what's cool is it encrypts the wrist strap, that TGT, with my password, with Kelly's password. If I had entered my password correctly, I'm able to decrypt the TGT. Okay, so password never traverses the network. I send username to the authentication service. It looks up Kelly Handerhan and Kelly Handerhan's password. How does it know Kelly Handerhan's password, you ask? Because it's a domain controller. And remember, if you're in an Active Directory environment or directory service-based environment, your domain controllers have all the user accounts and passwords. So that's been pre-configured. Okay? Username goes to the authenticating service. It generates a ticket granting ticket and encrypts that ticket granting ticket with Kelly's key. Sends it back across the network and Kelly's key is based on Kelly's password, right? So you could say password, you could say key. All right, so if that ticket granting ticket's encrypted with Kelly's password, only if I had entered my password correctly am I able to decrypt the TGT. So I didn't have to send my TGT, my password across the network. I only had to be able to decrypt the TGT. And by being able to do that, that guarantees that I entered my password correctly. Now you may want to play that a couple of times and chew through it, right? I send username. TGT comes back encrypted with Kelly's password. If Kelly's password was entered correctly, Kelly can decrypt the TGT. And just the fact that I have a decrypted TGT proves my password was entered correctly. Great. But all that does is get me into the realm. I'm in the realm. What can I do? Nothing except if I want to ride the rides, I have to get my tickets, right? Just the fact that I have a ticket granting ticket proves that I was authenticated. So when I go and send a request to the ticket granting service, the ticket booth, the ticket granting service, and I say, hey, I want to print the print server A, the ticket granting service says, oh, you have a TGT. You must have come in the right way. Here's your ticket. Okay. Now, what's cool about this piece, a ticket is simply two copies of the exact same session key, the exact same session key. One of those session keys is encrypted with Kelly Handerhan's password. Why? Because the ticket booth wants one more proof that I really am Kelly Handerhan, that I'm legit. And if my security accounts manager can decrypt that session key, then great. That's a guarantee that I'm still Kelly. So decrypt the session key. The print job is encrypted with the session key and the ticket is forwarded to print server A. What's the other session key on that ticket encrypted with? Print server A's password. Why? Because I want to guarantee that where I'm sending my print job is the legitimate print server A. Only print server A can decrypt the session key, decrypt the print job. So the fact that I could uh, encrypt it with the right key and print server A could decrypt it with the right key, we've just authenticated to each other again. Okay, so highlights of Kerberos. One time through the admission booth. The admission booth's called the authenticating server. Many times to the ticket granting service, I need a ticket that's unique for every single service that I'm gonna access, okay? When I go through the authenticating service, I get a TGT, a ticket granting ticket. I could only decrypt that ticket granting ticket 
if I'd entered my password correctly. Yay, I've got a ticket granting ticket. Now, I want to go to the print service. I send my ticket granting ticket and a request for print service A to the TGS, ticket granting service. It sends me back a ticket, which is a unique session key for this print job. The session key is encrypted. One of the session keys is encrypted with my password. I decrypt that because I have my password. And again, this is underneath the service. It's my security accounts manager. I get the session key, encrypt the print job with that session key, send that and the ticket to the ticket grand, uh, to the uh, service, the Ferris wheel or the print server or whatever that may be. It is the legitimate service. It's able to decrypt the session key and decrypt the print job. Whew. There's a lot going on with Kerberos back and forth, but we need all that going on for a couple of reasons. We need the single sign-on. Users can't be expected to remember 50,000 passwords all the way throughout the domain, but we also need that authentication, not just users authenticating to services, services also authenticating to users. So that's Kerberos in a nutshell. It's the Kerberos carnival. I hope this analogy was helpful for, uh, to you, and I wish you the best of luck in your certifications. Take care.